But before we do that, we are going to talk about the next speaker here, which is the amazing Bert Wicks. Now, here, I'm going to give you guys a number first, and then we're going to go through more information on Bert, because here's what's uh, super blows my mind right now. In 2021, the reason he's giving this message, which the message he's giving is he's going to talk about his new customer approach. My understanding, by the way, is you could probably use this approach not just at the booth, but anytime you're talking to a new customer in any scenario, he can correct me if that's wrong. But new customer approach. So last year using this approach, he said he had his best year ever. He was very meticulous about this script and approach he's going to teach you. With it, he sold 40 galleys, 82 homemakers, 52 signatures and 46 ultimates just last year. And many of those were to new customers. So that's exciting. Now, if you don't know Bert well, here's some inf interesting information. When he was brand new, I think this is funny because most of us, I think that know him well would describe him as a very confident person. But when he was brand new, his very first appointment with Cutco was with his grandparents. And when they said they wanted to buy the homemaker, his response was like, really, are you sure? And they were like, his grandfather, who was also in sales, was like, never, ever ask that question ever again when someone says that. And he's like, okay, good idea. So he's come a long way since then. People who know him well would say he's positive. They love that about him, that he adds value to people consistently, that his energy level is next level. Like Energizer Bunny never stops, never rests. Um, when he started with the events program, he was already at like 400 K in sales, but he started working events because he wanted to add another, like, it was more about the challenge of mastering the next area of the business. Since he was already doing so well with what he was doing. He also wanted to give Cutco like a real true, give it my all shot for the year when he started with the events team that year. And he was told that it was going to be the best, or at least one of the quickest ways to really build his CRM of contacts, like to add more and more contacts to his CRM, which of course, as we all know, is getting you to the place where a little bit more of what we call passive income coming in. It's not completely passive, but it's closer to it. So he's today at 3 million in career sales. That's super exciting. And last year, or one of the things he's really proud of is that he helped coordinate the North Star team's $2.9 million sales year. He had back-to-back -back events, the Minnesota State Fair and the Iowa State Fair, both over $110,000 at each event. He had his first 20K day ever at a booth when he was working an event. He loves the team. He loves the culture. He loves being around other people that want to grow and learn. He loves the pace of events because it allows him to get better quickly because you're putting things into play immediately and over and over again. He loves cracking jokes with customers. He's really good at making people laugh if you didn't know that about Bert. I'm expecting, by the way, Bert, a demonstration of your hula hooping while juggling skills at the next Cutco company trip. So make sure to bring your hula hoop and whatever it is that you juggle, because I want to see that also. And if you hear stuff today and you love this and you want to thank him, here are the things he loves most that you can use to thank him with. Feel free to help him with his traveling, his Chipotle, his Lululemon, his Patagonia, golf, going to driving range, and his DQ Oreo ice cream cakes. That's how Bert treats himself is those things. So I'm going to let Bert take it away. Oh, thank you so much, Amy, for the amazing introduction. It's uh, it's amazing. It's 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 an honor to be here today, guys. This is on my dreams list to give a general session message at Net, and I get to follow the all-time greats, Kareem Altawanzi and Brandon Brown. I am just like kid in a candy store right now. I'm so grateful to be here. And by the way, I don't juggle knives, so I still have all ten digits, so I can hula hoop and juggle like tennis balls. It's really not that exciting, but it's something random that I can do. Um, I just want to say thank you to Kareem and Brandon. Actually, first off, like you guys are actually a huge reason why this message is being given by me today. A lot of this stuff that I've taken in the last two years, really like tried to hone this in has been just developed by <laughs> amazing people in this business. And I just have tried to take it and be a sponge and then just try to make it um, a little kind of like my style, but also be able to teach it. And that's my goal today. Um, like it's just, it's amazing how amazing our opportunity has been within this business and events literally have changed my life. Like I didn't think I would be, uh, <laughs> I'd never in a million years, like 10 years ago, when you told me I sold 800 grand in a year, um, it's basically behind a booth. I, it's, it's insane to me, but, um, a lot of the people that are giving messages to Curtis is the Matt Graves. Like I remember in 2016, it was the first net ever. And Brandon, uh, Matt Graves, and T.C. Smith, you guys gave a message on handling objections. And I remember that year, I was like, God, everybody walks away. Everybody does. And I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done with having people walk away from me. And I remember that message. It was like the last one. I was like, I'm going to get really good at this. 
So I would say this before I start today, guys, like whatever you guys are learning today, like there's something you're struggling with, like really hone in on that one thing. And if you put in the time to get better at that, like literally you can change your event business overnight if you decide to be intentional about that. So um, I want to start off with the scenario that a lot of things, I think a lot of people have probably been through in their life. So imagine a customer comes up to your guys' booth. They've never heard of Cutco, right? Or maybe they heard about it. Maybe their mom has it or whatever, right? And they're in the market for some good knives. They're sick of the ones they've got. You're like, oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be easy, right? And then lo and behold, somehow throughout the presentation, all of a sudden you're like, this is not happening. Like something is happening right now and they are not vibing, right? It's like you find yourself in a position where all of a sudden you're throwing in the kitchen sink on a customized homemaker to try to get them to buy something from you, right? Or you're trying to give them 15% off of a trimmer, a catalog price, right? So after 25 minutes you spend with this customer, all of a sudden you're like, I just tried everything. And you just got the dreaded, all right, cool, Bert, I got to think about it. I'm going to go grab some food around the corner and we'll be right back. And you're like, no, don't, don't leave, right? So again, like Brandon just said, that's an amazing thing to get better at to be able to help them not leave, right? But even you probably have all been to the situation, no matter what you feel like you say after the fact that they're in this weird space that they're in, you just can't get them to say yes to something, right? So my goal today is to help you get to a big sale as efficiently as possible. So my goal today is to try to get you to that roadmap to avoid this random space that customers fall into midway through a demo where all of a sudden they're completely disengaged or they get to the end of the demo and like you haven't popped any fear bubbles and all of a sudden they're like, cool, we got to think about this whole thing, right? So my goal is to try to help you guys get to the place where you pop a lot of those fear bubbles. So once you get to the point where you're asking for a person to buy an ultimate from you, they're just like, they look to their wife or look to their husband. They're like, okay, let's just do that, right? So today we're going to talk about the new customer script and kind of raising your average order through the proper positioning of everything in that script. So again, there's going to be... Um, a handout that's sent out at the end of this message. So you guys aren't looking at that right now, but there's going to be a couple of like the one-liners slash paragraphs that I say today um, that you'll be able to actually like, you'll have a handout for that. So type as many notes as you can. Again, if there's any questions, I'll be free to um, help to answer them afterwards, but also just know that after this, I'm going to be role-playing my new customer script as well. Um, so you guys can, I'm going to kind of give you the, the whys behind everything. So I want you to imagine an interaction with a customer where you check every single one of these boxes, which there's four big ones, which is there's quick trust, there's proper price positioning, there's an awareness of all Cutco products, and it's easy, it's an easy yes when you ask for the order. So again, you want to build quick trust, proper price positioning, so they're not like, oh my God, this is so expensive, bye. There's an awareness on all Cutco products, so they're aware of what we have, right? We're not just a knife company, and there's an easy yes when you ask for the order, right? So... We're going to talk about a few things and I'm going to pile through all these because I got so much information to talk about, but we're going to fly through this. Thank God this is recorded. <laughs> so we're going to do a quick overview on kind of what it looks like, right? With the order of operations within my new customer approach, just basics. We're going to talk about how to make your words a little bit more impactful, right? To also paint some pictures with customers, how to plug more packages throughout the approach quickly, and also how to position the ultimate set within your pitch. And I'm going to talk about how to sell the cutting boards and the sharpener. Um, and also I'd sell like a couple of gadgets and not have to give away the boat when you're selling ultimates and signatures and homemakers. So before I jump in, in a perfect world, right? If I had the opportunity to say everything to each customer, right? I would love to do that, but it's not a perfect world, right? So Kareem talked about it earlier. Sometimes you're going to have an event. We talked to three people all day. You're also going to have some events where you're talking to 40 in a day and you're like, I can't get information out fast enough, right? So sometimes you got to cut, like literally cut to the chase on like certain things that you're going to say. And that's okay, right? But you want to get to the meat and potatoes as much as you can as often as possible. So the basic structure of my new customer approach goes in like 10 different parts. So there's qualifying questions. You cut leather. There's a brief history about Cutco. There's a power intro about you. There's a transition into the guarantee. There's guarantee examples. You're going to position the three sets slash the kitchen. You're going to do a price comparison whether that's on Cutco itself or a competitor. You're gonna show prices of those sets that you're showing them. You're gonna ask for the order Jedi style, which I'll get to in a little bit. And you're gonna bring it all together. And if you need to, you're gonna drop down, okay? So that's the basics, right? It's not gourmet, by the way. I do maybe things a little bit in different orders than some of you might, but it's not, it's not crazy or anything like that, okay? Number two, how to make your words more impactful. Like Brandon just said, 
the order of your operations and of your words matter so freaking much. Like I can't stress this enough, right? So how can you sell more by saying less, right? So a big one, for example, that I feel like most reps do, even though Brandon talked about this, like literally five nights ago, and it was life-changing for me, right? They'll ask a couple qualifying questions like, yeah, are you guys in the market for some good knives? They'll say, yes, maybe, whatever they say. It's like, cool, awesome. And then you just jump right into the history of Cutco. We were made in 1949, we American made, blah, 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 blah. Now, most of the time, we've established, right, that these customers we're talking to literally did not know what Cutco is at all 45 seconds ago, okay? So if I was in a customer's shoes, I'm, if I, <laughs> if somebody, some stranger started telling me about Cutco's history, would I really be paying attention to that? Or would I be distracted by the 150 different freaking products that are laid out in front of me that are all shiny and you're just so focused on everything else besides what this random stranger is that's trying to talk to you, right? You're probably going to be focused on all the products, not what's actually being said by the salesperson you've never met before, right? So the first thing that I do with my customers after I've talked about cutting leather, once I've cut leather, is I am meet, or after immediately asking the qualifying questions is I immediately cut leather. Right, the leather, leather demo, as we know, is extremely a huge a part, a, poor, uh, a huge part of our demo. Right, Brandon talked about this again a while ago. Like, cut leather quickly and cut big, big, big pieces of leather. Right, make it a wow type of experience. So after the leather, they're saying, "Oh my God, this is the craziest thing ever." So again, Mrs. Jones, every time, I want you to imagine with me. Again, I got this from Kareem. Shout out to Kareem. I want you to use imagine if. Imagine if that's like the best line you can use in the history of ever, like help paint the picture within a customer's mind of what it's going to be like to use Cutco. So imagine if Mrs. Jones, you grabbed a knife from your set and it just worked every single time over and over and over again. Like every single time, Mrs. Jones, not like you grab it out of the box and then two weeks later, it doesn't cut. Like you probably have experienced like every other person that's bought a knife set in North America in the last 50 years right? Now, when you say the history of Cutco after you've cut leather, you've just grabbed their attention. You grab their face basically and be like, pay attention to me, Mrs. Jones. This stuff is the bomb. You just cut leather and you've never experienced a knife cutting like that in your life. And now you get to pay attention to what I'm actually going to say. And it's actually going to go in your ear and not go out the other. It's going to get stuck, right? So now when you say we're American made, we're the number one kitchen company in North America. We've been around since 1949. You mentioned Modern Marvels or any of the other introduction things that you say with Cutco, it lands, right? Another example of what you should be using when you're using, again, at the booth and when to say it and when it matters is like a brief power intro about yourself, right? You could say a power intro about who you are at the end of the demo, which is better than nothing, but it's way less meaningful if you mention like your credibility before you get right to the, the meat and potatoes of the demonstration, right? So after you've explained, again, some brief inch, like brief um, stuff about the double the edge, right? That's where I usually go right into. So just so you know a little bit about me, Mrs. Jones, I'm Bert. I've actually been doing this for about 11 years. And I service over about 6,000 clients across the United States. And I actually work directly with Cutco. And they actually bring me into this event to help our customers with service, but also to help them get the best value with our specials while we're here. By the way, that's going to be in the handout, right? So that matters, right? You're giving yourself credibility on what, who, what everything that you say next is gonna matter, right? They're like, hey, this is not some nobody that's just never done this before, right? Another example is being intentional about dramatic pauses. Kareem just kind of talked about this and the importance of, again, inflection, right? You get a little bit more low on your tonality when you're talking about something serious, right? So something that I do is when I'm talking about the guarantee, which I'll talk a little bit about later, I'll talk about how one of my buddies in college burned a table knife and melted the handle in half and we had to send it in, right? And they sent us a new one. But it's like, I literally will hand them that knife and I'll say, Mrs. Jones. So this is the example of my buddy. He was a little, had too many, a uh, few too many Kool-Aids that night. And I hand it to him and I pause and I say, so this, this is the receipt. And the amount of people that go, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's like you could just fly right through that, right? You can bulldoze your way through the pitch. You can, but you can differentiate yourself by actually being like intentional and pausing when you want to talk about what you want to talk about with the customers. Okay. Number three, how to plug more packages throughout the approach and how to do it quickly. Okay. Without having to take 20 minutes talking about cookware or flatware or kitchen gadgets. Okay. The guarantee is the part of the demo 
that there's so much area of opportunity for reps in like across the country, specifically at events. You have the ability to tell real stories about real customers' experiences. So utilize this time, right? Seth is the best at this, guys. Seth talks about you don't state facts, you tell facts through stories, right? So remember that when you're talking about the guarantee, you're still riding the high of the leather that Brandon talked about. So keep piling it on, right? You don't need to cut something else necessarily, just keep riding that high of the leather. So when explaining the first two parts of the guarantee, which again is the forever performance and also the forever sharpening, right? I use a couple of real examples for each, right? So for example, I'll use everything from my buddy melted the table knife in half when he had too many Kool-Aids. I'll talk about a customer who had a knife passed down from their grandpa who literally took it to a freaking belt sander and took it a freaking trimmer that used to have teeth on it to absolutely like the skinniest looking thing that looks like a mini boning knife, right? Yeah, I basically like the guy, the guy literally forgot Cucko was guaranteed. And I share that story. I talk about how a customer had another like random little piece of a table knife that melted on a burner of a stovetop. I tell a customer that tried to cut a freaking rock in the garden or tried to cut a freaking, they were cutting sod in a garden for crying out loud. And they hit a rock, snapped the knife in half, didn't even have the other freaking half of the knife. And they sent it in and Cucko replaced it for him. Right. And I show that to them. They're like, yeah. It's husband proof is kind of what I tell my customers and the wives always get a kick out of that because guys, we can be silly sometimes, right? When you're talking about the sharpening guarantee, right? Having the sharpening slip, right? The customer, the one that's been widely spread throughout the company, which is the customer that sent in 32 knives, 12 were sharpened, 20 were replaced for free at the cost of $11 in shipping. Share that. If you guys have customer emails or testimonials, like I, when I send my customers the email, I'm like, hey, if you have a great experience with this experience of sending in your knives for Cucko or to Cucko, I would love to hear about it. So when they send that email back, I get amazing emails and they're not a ton, right? But I get five to 10 a year probably that are like, oh my gosh, this was the craziest situation ever. I sent in my cuckoo from 1975. I sent them in and 12 days later, I got them back, right? So it's your job guys at the end of the day to spit facts to customers, but the best way to help a customer believe what you're saying is not to just tell them, but it's just to literally show them. Right, you want to know a big reason why a lot of people walk, guys? Some people will literally walk away because they think what you're saying is too good to be true. So show them, make it real, right? If you run into a random old piece of Cutco, guys, that will be re- would be replaced if you sent it into Cutco, skip a step and just buy it for them and take it from them. Just buy them a bread knife that's broken in half. Buy the table knife that has a melted handle on it right? Like these are examples that are so real for customers that when they, when you show a customer, they're like, oh my God, you really cover that, right? Who here, I don't know about you guys, but I know I can't really see any of you guys, but I've been burned by guarantees before just because I thought that I read the fine print, but I didn't read that. Like they didn't read it that well, like Apple care. (laughs) I bought an Apple, I bought a MacBook Pro when I was 17, just before I started to go to college. And I thought that Apple Care was forever because I started selling cutco knives. I was like, ah, everything's forever. <laughs> I was like, that's not obviously the case. So three years goes by, right? Without me thinking anything, no, no problems, no issues. And then year four, I freaking broke my laptop and I went to the Apple store thinking it was going to be covered. And news to me, it was not, right? So again, the customer is going to be in the same situation. They're going to usually have an experience of being burned with a, um, a some type of guarantee or warranty issue. So one of the ways you can help solve a customer without having them have to walk around and think about it to do their research, quote unquote, how many of you guys have heard that? I know I've heard it too many times. You pop those fear bubbles throughout by showing real examples, right? Now, while you're also going through, again, the knife replacements and the sharpening, right, during the guarantee, this is an amazing opportunity to talk about the fact that, again, we're not just a kitchen or not just a knife company, right? So it's like the best part about the guarantee, Mrs. Jones, it's Cucko, again, as I mentioned earlier, is not just a knife company. Right? We're the number one kitchen company. So let's say in 14 years, a handle on your saucepan comes loose. Right? Guess what Cutco will send you? A new one. And I always do. They always say the same thing. They're like a new one because they figured it out now. I always give them nuts. I'm like, quick learner. <laughs> High five, quick learner, right? And everybody gets a kick out of that, right? So what's great about the cooker, by the way, Mrs. Jones's first stop, it's the most important product. Shout out to Kareem for that line. Is five layers of metal and the inner three are heat conductors. So not just the bottom, but the whole entire pan is, right? So for example, you know when you make bacon in a skillet and never cooks evenly? Like literally every single time you make bacon in our skillet, it will cook on every single side of the pan. So the whole entire piece of bacon is cooked evenly, right? Now, another cool thing about Mrs. Jones about Cutco is that like, for example, with our flatware, like if you bust a spoon or a fork, right? If you somehow manage to bust it, right? Just send it in. Guess what they're going to send you? A new one. It's amazing, right? So what's great about the flatware is there's less oomph, right? You can feel it. Hold it to them, right? 
I don't know if you guys are familiar with like um, 1810, but what that means is 18% chrome and 10% nickel. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen that really old Chevy bumper from like the 1950s that still had the bumper like super, super pretty and shiny. Guess how many times they polished it? Yeah, zero, right? So every single time you put this in the dishwasher, it's gonna come out this shiny every single time. Right. And the cool thing is, Mr. Jones, even on our can opener, it's the same exact thing on our kitchen utensils. If you break it, they just replace it. Now, the only again thing that Cutco can guarantee, the only way Cutco can guarantee these products, Mrs. Jones, is if because they're built like an absolute tank, right? And again, things busting, breaking are just they're just not normal. So if it was, <laughs> Cutco would have been out of business literally 60 years ago. So that's how I'm explaining the guarantee, guys. And then you go through the trial period, right? So it's like some people, Mrs. Jones, they'll just come up, right? And it's like, this is this is your opportunity again to just introduce, introduce the Cuckoo Kitchen, which is what Kareem talks about, right? So it's like, it's a great way to just super casually mention it, but it's like, this is what it is. And I do the same thing that Kareem does, which is have the, the Cuckoo Kitchen laid out 10-5, bam, it's right in front of me. Most people get to it before I even mention it. They're like $10,500 for knives. I'm like, no, Mrs. Jones, that's everything, right? Which is the best value within Cuckoo, right? But you always, I always say this is a great example. And this is a shout out to Justin Ford for this, this paragraph, but it's Cuckoo is similar to Apple in a way, Mr. Jones, like everything is centered around the iPhone, but they also have MacBooks, iPads, accessories, right? But everything syncs together. That's the idea behind the Cuckoo kitchen. Again, imagine in 20 years grabbing your skillet and it's still cooking burgers evenly, right? You still have a matching set of flatware because we've only made one single design that will always match. And the best part is everything works every single time you grab it right so i show this option to everyone mrs jones because again this is everyone's goal and right? it's that it's not going to break the bank because i'm here right because you love to cook or because you're in the market to replace your kitchen whatever it is right it kind of just makes sense to get it today right so like i said mrs jones i show this to everybody and hey if it fits great but if not no worries right so here's where the real work comes in not every single person is going to buy a cuckoo kitchen right from you on the spot like that or a bundle deal right but when you position the bundles correctly you're going to end up selling more knife sets specifically bigger ones but at the end of the day most people right are usually looking for knives and that's fine right and it, in the, at the end of the day if you can sell more ultimates so you can sell more bundle deals that's awesome right in introducing it early and often like i would say kareem would agree with this not everybody just says yep that's it i'm gonna get the cuckoo kitchen right now 10.5 easy 2100 a month i don't want it anyway most people don't do that right and that's okay but if you position it i think the i mean the two cuckoo kitchens that i sold in the last couple months of the year this last year were literally to people that were like ha, that's funny <laughs> nice try bert and then about 30 minutes later guess where we got them the cuckoo kitchen, right? But it's because I planted it, right? And I planted it well. I planted it like Kareem talked about. It's like, you don't make this thing like, oh, nobody does this, right? You have the confidence to say, yes, people do buy this. And you don't like, you, you can't be like, yeah, this is just easy. You got to still recognize the fact that yes, it's an investment, Mr. Jones. But if you can swing it, it makes sense because this is the best bang for your buck with cuckoo, okay? So at the end of the day, as I was mentioning, not everybody ends up with a full cuckoo kitchen, right? So a great way to start and maximize to increase your average order with all of the knife sets that we sell or to do a really good job of pitching the knife sets, right? So the next thing I wanna talk about is how to position the ultimate within your pitch, okay? So the first thing that we need to do within the ultimate is to create want, okay? Imagine this really quick. I want everybody to walk through this. I know people in my division, we've walked through this exercise a couple of times. And I know I've talked on a couple of other national calls where people have heard this before, but it's a really, really important reminder for you as the seller. And again, put yourself in the customer's shoes, right? I want you to imagine the iPhone, right? Or the, again, Android that you have, right? Whatever it is. I want you to imagine you just got like uh, men in black where you had your memory just disappear about something, right? You walk into an iPhone store, Apple store, and all you see is a piece of whatever this is now, titanium and a piece of glass on front of it. That's all you see, right? You have no idea the capabilities of what is in an iPhone or the Android, right? You go up to the person that's in the Apple store. You're like, cool, how much is that? And the person goes, that's $1,800. And you are like, what in God's green earth gives you the audacity to charge me $1,800 for a piece of freaking titanium and I don't even think it's titanium <laughs> and glass, right? What gives you the audacity? Because you have no freaking idea what's inside of it, okay? But once you understand that this thing literally can just make your life easier, more efficient. It gives you, you can access anything on this thing. You can take pictures, you can take videos, you can post on social media, you can connect with the world. You can look up the answer to pie in two seconds when you look it up on Google. Like all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, that makes so much sense on why I would have this. 
right? So if a person ever walks up to you and says, how much is that ultimate set? And you say $3,200 and the person goes, oh my God, that's where they're coming from. They see a piece of wood with 32 freaking things sticking out of it. And they don't even know what's in it, right? So you have to remember your job, right? Is by the end of you showing the set of knives to them, which we'll get into a second, is to make them be like, that is so freaking awesome. I want this, right? It's now, it's not they're looking at, oh, I'm, I'm gonna spend 3,200 bucks on knives. What do I get? It's, oh, that comes with this and that. And that now all of a sudden their mind isn't, oh, I don't know if I would ever spend 3,200 bucks on knives. It's, I want this. How can I spend $3,200 on knives? How can I get this into my kitchen? Okay. So I do it a little bit differently than Kareem. Kareem has actually been going on all this, but this is just what's worked really, really well for me in this past year, which I think has also worked really, really well with customers. So when I'm talking about the three sets, I actually talk about the ultimate first, then the homemaker, and then I talk about the signature. So how I do it is this. So Mrs. Jones, there's basic three main sets and I have my Cuckoo little trifold. So if you guys have the Cuckoo kitchen brochure, I basically have two. I've got one that's just folded to the three set page, essentially. And I've got a separate one also. I don't know why I have two, but brochures are the best. So I talked about the three sets. So I'm like, yeah, so Mrs. Jones, basically there's three main sets within the Cuckoo um, kind of options. So three most popular sets that people kind of pick between here at the event. So the first set is our biggest and our best set. And actually I lead with it because I want people to be like, that's the set that I want, right? So I was like, yeah, this is the, the biggest and the best set that we met, that we make Mrs. Jones. Shout out to Seth on this line, which is it's the uh, set that everybody wants. It's not necessarily the set that everybody can afford, but it's a set that everybody works towards owning eventually because you will always have the right tool for the right job, right? So a couple of the highlights in the set that everybody loves. First piece that I show guys is the cleaver, all right? So I'm the yeah, Mrs. Jones. The first piece that you get is the attitude adjuster. And I always hand it to the husband first if you're with both husband and wife because the husband does this thing every time. Oh yeah, that's a knife, right? So it's like, yeah, Mrs. Jones, this is the knife that everybody, again, basically this is the built-in attitude adjuster. So if he ever gets out of line, you can just use this on him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, that's, that's abuse. We don't want that in this uh, situation here. But the idea Mrs. Jones behind this is that this is the knife that if you ever were cutting something that you feel like is too big that you might break a knife, this is the knife that you're going to grab. For example, again, I sell a lot in North Dakota and South Dakota and like upper Minnesota. So we have a lot of meat eaters, kind of like the people in Texas and the different parts of the country. But so I talk a lot about meat. I love the line Kareem about the, again, the frozen brick of cabbage. It's awesome. But the whole idea is I say, yeah, Mrs. Jones, so if you've ever looked at the, bo the bottom, the backside of a frozen tube of brown, ground beef, it actually has notches. So you can pick how much meat you want. So you don't have to thaw the entire thing out to use in this, have meat that you don't have any good place to put it. So you can actually take this cleaver, pop right through it, Mrs. Jones. You can take the other half of the meat that you don't want, put it right back in the freezer and use it for a time when you need it. Now for a lot of people, Mrs. Jones, you might not use this every day, but it's a great piece to have just in case. Now this one, hand them the vegetable knife right after. I'm like, yeah, this one, Mrs. Jones, it looks just like the cleaver, but feel how lightweight it is. Oh yeah, it's amazing, right? So what I love about this, Mrs. Jones, is it makes you feel like a pro but you don't have to feel like, don't have to be a pro to use it. So shout out to Curtis on this. This is a, this is like the chopping knife for dummies, Mrs. Jones, it cuts everything. So you can chop a head of cabbage with it. You can cut through like a sweet potato or like a eight corner butternut squash with two hands. You can chop, rock, dice, and mince all with one knife. It does everything. And you can also check yourself out, Mrs. Jones, and call this the pretty lady knife. <laughs> all right. The next one, Mrs. Jones, is one of my favorites. It's what we call is our, um, our thin slicing knife. I explain the thin slicer. I show the Jason Jeffrey video. Kareem, I would definitely recommend showing the Jason Jeffrey video. It's great. <laughs> I know you don't need it though, but it's a great thing. If you guys don't actually know how to explain the salmon knife, it's a great way to just watch that. I clip it down from YouTube. The next one, Mrs. Jones, is my personal favorite knife. This is the boning knife. I think cutting raw meat is the most frustrating piece of like work with a dull knife. So this knife will take a frozen, basically, this will take a, a piece of raw meat. You can literally cut through it without dragging. And then I show a video of cutting chicken breasts with it. And it's also a very big visual for people. They're like, oh, it's amazing. And the last one, Mr. Jones, that everybody loves is our pairing knife that comes in our basic and our, uh, our family size set. It comes with a pairing knife. It's just always dirty. So in the biggest set, or in our complete set, you actually get an additional pairing knife that's a little bit bigger. So you can peel and cut with one knife. So those are the highlights that come in our complete set. The basic set, Mrs. Jones, your basic meat and potatoes, nothing gourmet about it. It's great for people that are minimalist that just need a few good knives to cook. It's got your basic pieces. It's got a, like a pairing knife, a couple of utility knives, bread knife, and a carving set. And then the, the cool thing about this set, Mrs. Jones, you can always upgrade into a bigger set later. And then I talk about the signature and I don't even talk much about it. I'm like, yeah, it comes with the basic tools plus 
a couple of the highlights. You just don't get all of the other highlights that come in the complete set. So for you, Mrs. Jones, if you were to pick a set that you're going to have for the next 30, 40, 50 years of your life, and you're never going to have to replace your set of knives, which set do you think would uh, fit your guys' family best? You'd be surprised how many people just go, oh, probably the complete set. Right? Because what have you talked about? You literally just created one in five knives. And what are the what five knives, what set does the five knives come in? The complete set. That's it. Right now, by the way, if they pick anything, and I'll go through my approach here in a little bit when we role play, if they pick anything else besides the ultimate, which is if they pick the family size set or the, the, the homemaker, I will very briefly discuss what comes in those pieces. And I'll again mention the pieces that people need to be sold on. Right. So if you're selling a homemaker, guys, the only three pieces you should ever talk about are the spreader, the fork. And the butcher knife. That's it. Because they don't know what the heck they're for. That's it. It's the only thing you need to talk about. You should be able to sell a homemaker in 45 seconds. And that's while going through the pieces. It's not complicated, right? So um, next thing, okay, is how to sell and how to actually like ask for an order without actually offering anything for free. Okay. This is the best thing that I'm going to teach you today. And if you take anything from this, I, I want everybody's average order to be better. And I want everybody to have to give away less while also making the customer feel amazing about the deal that they're getting. Okay. So the goal is to incentivize a customer without actually offering them anything for free. So how do I do this? Who here has ever felt at the end of a demo, right near the close, they get kind of nervous or anxious about how to close the freaking deal. They're like, oh my God, am I supposed to give them something for free? Am I supposed to take a cut off my commission. What the heck am I going to do here? Right? So when I found the set that they like the most, right, I'll go through the price comparison, then we'll go through the sets, right? I'll run through all three of the sets just so they know their options. And I'll circle back to the one that they chose first, right? So just easy enough, let's call it the ultimate for this one, right? So I'll go through the basic confirmation questions. Cool, Mrs. Jones, you got a couple options on color. You can do the classic or the pearl. What would you prefer? Classic, great choice. Now you can do a darker cherry color for the block or a lighter honey oak. What would you prefer? I like the darker cherry. Great choice, Mrs. Jones. Now, do you like the idea of splitting it up over the five months or would you rather just pay for it, right? And a lot of people, and I, a lot of people sometimes when they ask this, they're like, oh boy, here we go. This is again a great question, guys, to kind of help feel out where you're at. But let's just say for the sake of time here, they say, yeah, we just split it up, right? When they say split it up, right? Or if they say, if they say split it up or pay for it in full, it doesn't matter to me. I always will recircle back because I want to avoid as much as I can. I need to think about it. Okay. I want to get rid of that as much as I can. So before I even ask for the order and before I do what I'm going to tell you guys to do in a second, I will go back to the trial period to be like, yeah, just as a friendly reminder, Mrs. Jones. Like the coolest thing about Cutco and when people buy from us here at this event, what's great about helping our customers be able to make a comp like a comfortable decision and a confident decision here at the show is again, you actually just as a reminder, get the chance to try out the set to really make sure that you love the tools that come in it. And if you change your mind for some reason, again, we just send it back, you get a full refund. But assuming you love it again, like everybody else, you just, you're done buying knives literally for the rest of your life. The only reason you'll ever buy more Cutco again is just because you want more of them, not because you need to replace them. Right. And this geo just reaffirms guys their ability to make a decision right now while they're in front of me. Right. And then I use this line. Okay, cool, Mrs. Jones. So since you're here, if I was able to do something a little extra special for you on top of the Cutco corporate discount that they already give you when you buy it as a set, would you maybe be open to just going for it right now? That also, by the way, is in the handout. So, okay, cool, Mrs. Jones. Since you're here, if I was able to do something just a little extra special, the power of this, guys, I cannot understand, I cannot overstated enough. Do this, a little extra special for you on top of the Cutco corporate discount they are already giving you as a set, when you buy it as a set, right? Would you maybe be open going for it right now? Okay, what is amazing about this? How much have I offered for free? Nothing at all, right? Absolutely nothing. You have zero skin in the game. So what's great about this is you're able to test the waters, to really see where a customer's at. So they say, well, maybe, right? You can bet your butt off. They're pretty damn close to you just closing the deal and you didn't have to give the farm to close it, right? What's really great about this is that if they say they're unsure or they need to think about it, that set probably isn't actually the right set. So you have the ability to say, cool, no worries. Well, just let me, like, let me write that down for you really quick and ask a few more discovery questions and close from there. You still have never given, you haven't given them anything for free yet. Now, if they're really that interested, they will always want to know what you could do to sweeten the deal, right? So when you use little instead of crazy, turbocharge, ridiculous, right? Eliminate those from your vocabulary. They should, they are not in alignment with the customer's expectations, right? So when you throw in a hundred dollar pair of shears on a homemaker, they're like, what? That's not crazy at all, right? It's just not. So how to position the cutco, right? How to position cutco 
how can you position Cuckoo with stuff that's not even included in the picture, right? So I want to build your average order, let Cuckoo's money work for you with cutting words and the sharpener, okay? So for the sake of time, I'm going to rifle through this. But when you're talking about the, I'm actually not good. I'm not going to talk about the cutting words and the sharpener because that's literally in my script and it's in the handout. So I'm not going to talk about it. But you are going to talk about the cutting boards and the sharpener like they are the sexiest thing ever, okay? So when you talk sexy about them, you talk about all the, how amazing they are. I will say on top of this, Mrs. Jones, if you had to pick up two out of these five kitchen gadgets and they fell into your kitchen door today and they never had to be replaced ever in your life, which two would you pick? Not three, not four, not five, two. Start with two. You want to leave them wanting. What that means is that everybody wants three, right? Everybody wants four. But if you make them pick two, there's always going to be a third one that you're going to put in the back of your head and be like, I'm going to use that, right? So once they pick the two, you're going to bring it all in front of them. So today, Mrs. Jones, this is all Brandon Brown as well. Paint the picture of what they are getting before you actually ask for the order. So it's like, Mrs. Jones, okay, cool. So what we're going to do for you today is we're going to get you the full complete set of knives, the classic color handles with the cherry color block. We're going to talk about everything that, again. We're going to talk about the, the pieces that they're most excited about, right? So again, I know you were super excited about that meat cleaver. You get the meat cleaver in it. You get that boning knife. You get that extra long paring knife. You get your 12 steak knives. I'm going to make sure that all three of those cutting boards, those forever cutting boards are included. And that $57 sharpener will also be included. Again, guys, all you got to do to make sure it's included, roll the order. That's it, right? Not giving it to them. So don't say that. You're not buying it for them. You're just making sure it's included. All you're doing is rolling the order. And then on top of that, Mrs. Jones, I'm actually going to personally buy you that $61 can opener and that $61 pizza cutter and have it all right in front of them. And so all that will be today, Mrs. Jones, is $652. And what I usually do is I'll just kind of duck below the table or grab something from behind me, just create a little bit of space. And when I'm vibing with most people, they'll do the thing where they just kind of like, oh yeah, cool. That just kind of makes sense, right? So if there's any hesitancy guys about this, right? You guys are pros at this. Just reassure, talk about the guarantee a little bit more. Remind them that their dishwasher safe. It's one and done, right? One other really great reminder is when you get to the close, save something that is super emotional. That's amazing. So cutting the penny guys, I don't cut the penny until I've already discussed three sets, like the pricing. I'm like, Oh my God, I almost forgot. And then I cut the penny like Kareem talks about, or I'll take my knife that my great aunt gave me in 1954. Right. And I'll bring that out. Be like, Mrs. Jones, take a guess, take a guess at how old this knife is. And they'll be like oh, 20 years. I'm like it's 60 now, eight years old. Right. It's insane. Like my great aunt got this and she actually put it in her will and I got the knife right? So how can you make an impact with a customer when they're close to spending $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 with you, right? So the intentionality behind saying something within like the, the guarantee of mentioning the other products that we make that will help you just show more bundle deals, right? But again, as Cream talked about upserving, and Matt's going to talk about it later, the best line that I can give it you, yeah, and again, Matt's going to give you a bunch of great lines, which is, okay, cool. So it doesn't have to be today, Mrs. Jones, after you've closed the order, but just a couple things so I, I, you should know down the road. Here's this, right? Here's that. I always say, once you get the card, it's a great line. It's just, hey, is it safe to say sometime in the future, eventually, you'll probably be adding on the Cuckoo Forever cookware or the Cuckoo Forever flatware? And they say, well, yeah, eventually I will. That's where I'll say, cool. Well, since you're here right now, just so you know, because you're doing this, and I'll sell them on it, obviously, to set stuff first, but I could also do this to um, essentially bring it all together. So with that, my time is up, guys. Again, I'm going to role play this in a couple of minutes, but um, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to speak to you guys. I hope your guys' fingers were on fire like mine were with Brandon and, uh, and Kareem. I know my, my fingers are going to need like a massage after this whole uh, two days are done. But I'm uh, so, again, grateful to be here and grateful to, to add some value. But um, with that, that's all I got for you. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you, Bert. I was fantastic. Now, and we probably will have some questions, but we'll do that after role play because role play might answer some of those questions too.